First, I'd like to thank the organizers of the Bay Area Virus Symposium for this opportunity to present our recently published results that the SMIC 5-6 complex is a host antiviral restriction factor targeted for degradation by the hepatitis B virus X protein. This work is the product of a collaboration between academic groups and HBV care at Gilead Sciences. The research originally began in Michel Steuben's laboratory at the University of Geneva, where in collaboration with Olivier Hans's group at the University of Lyon, the SMIC 5-6 complex is identified as the target of uh, HBX. And the HBX team at Gilead Sciences formed a collaboration with Michel Steuben's group, and we have worked to confirm and extend this phenotype both in vitro and in vivo using a distinct set of assays and conditions. And our collaboration continues today as we work to define this mechanism of action. Despite the availability of an effective vaccine targeting HBV, chronic hepatitis B virus infection remains a worldwide health problem. The WHO uh, reported that about 250 million individuals are chronically infected with hepatitis B virus worldwide. Areas of the world with highest endemicity include East Asian countries and Sub-Saharan Africa. Although we have antiviral therapies available to treat chronic hepatitis B virus infection, including nucleoside and nucleotide analogs, as well as interferon treatment, these therapies require lifelong regimens. And currently we do not have curative options for chronic hepatitis B virus infection. It was reported in 2015 that about 0.8 million fatalities have occurred from complications associated with chronic hepatitis B virus infection, including liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. The HBV replication cycle begins when the enveloped infectious HBV virion engages a recently identified receptor on the surface of human hepatocytes called the NTCP receptor. The viral DNA genome is deposited into the nucleus, and the incoming DNA genome is actually an intermediate molecule that is nicked and gapped. And following repair by a cellular mediated, mediated mechanism, covalent closed circular DNA is formed. CCC DNA remains episomal throughout the viral life cycle. Production of four viral RNAs are transcribed from CCC DNA. And HPV encodes a limited set of viral proteins, including the capsid protein, core or, or capsid, um, as well as uh, surface antigens, which not only make up the infectious particle, but are also released from the cell during infection. And levels of uh, these viral antigens, for example, S antigen, E antigen, can be surveyed in the cell supernatant during infection as a measure of productive viral transcription. Importantly, the X protein, a small non-structural protein, is also produced, and HBX is required for transcription from CCC DNA, both in in vitro and in vivo systems. So what role might be, what, what role might X play in transcription from CCC DNA? It was shown a number of years ago that HBX can bind into a cellular, cellular ubiquitin ligase complex called the DDB1 colon 4 ligase complex. However, the substrate of this complex was not identified. Many viruses are known to exploit the host ubiquitin proteasome system to degrade host factors that are antiviral. For example, lentiviruses encode VIF protein to degrade cytidine deaminase apoBEC3. The HIV2 protein, VPX, can degrade the antiviral factor SAMHD1. Other viruses, such as papillomaviruses, will drive cells into um, cell growth by targeting host restrictive factors such as p53 and retinoblastoma. The paramyxovirus, simian virus 5, encodes a small protein V, which much like X, also binds into the Col4 DDB1 ubiquitin ligase complex to degrade an antiviral intrinsic immune factor, STAT1. However, up until now, the target of the X Col4 DDB1 complex was not identified, and this was a subject of the study. So in order to identify the substrate of the X-DDB1 ubiquitin ligase complex, initial attempts to identify the substrate 
uh, from immunoprecipitation reactions of tab-tagged HBX, wild-type HBX, pulled down components of the ubiquitin ligase complex, however, the substrate remained unknown, presumably because the substrate was released too rapidly from the ubiquitin ligase complex to be identified by proteomics. So a creative approach needed to be employed. The Struben Laboratory engineered a covalent link between X and DDB1. Wild-type fusion protein would still bind into the Cullen-4 ubiquitin ligase complex. So upon engagement or recognition of the substrate by X, the substrate would be ubiquinated and proteolized. However, they also formed or engineered a mutant fusion protein in which X is covalently linked to a mutant form of DDB1 that cannot bind into the Cullen scaffold. In this way, any substrate that is bound by X would presumably not be ubiquinated because this uh, complex cannot bind into the rest of the ubiquin ligase complex. Therefore, the substrate would be stabilized and we would be able to detect it by proteomics. So following immunoprecipitation of the wild type fusion protein and the mutant fusion protein, we came up with the following um, results, mass spectrometry results. So if you look here on the left, the wild type protein, the wild type fusion, uh, we, we detected X and DDB1 as expected, a DDB1 associated factor, as well as the Cullen scaffold. However, uh, a putative substrate of XDDB1 was not identified. The mutant complex, also we recognized uh, X peptides as well as DDB1, the DDB1 associated protein, but the Cullen scaffold was not identified as expected since DDB1 cannot engage into the Cullen scaffold. Interestingly, all six subunits of a nuclear cellular complex were identified. And this complex is called the SMIC56 complex. So this field is really opening up currently. Um, but we do know a few interesting details about the SMIC56 complex. It is a complex of six subunits, and these subunits are interdependent on one another for stability. SMIC56 complex binds DNA, including chromosomes, as well as episomal templates like plasmids. SMIC56 complex can regulate chromosome structure, and it can play a role in the DNA damage response pathway, homologous recombination. It can also modulate DNA topology by modulating supercoiling of DNA, and is not required for viability of quiescent or resting hepatocytes in vitro. However, it is embryonic lethal if, not, if knocked out. So, so far we have a model forming in which during infection, X hijacks the cellular E3 ubiquin ligase, Cull4 DDB1, to mediate the degradation of the SMIC56 complex. And normally, in the absence of uh, X, the SMIC56 complex plays, might play a uh, repressive role in transcription from CCC DNA. But in the presence of X, degradation of the SMIC56 complex allows this release, and transcription of viral RNAs can proceed. So to test this in our hands, we overexpressed wild type or mutant X protein in HEPG2 cells by transfection. So the mutant form of HBX harbors an amino acid substitution, disabling its ability to bind into the DDB1 Cull4 complex. So, and we surveyed by Western blot levels of SMIC6, X protein, as well as loading control. So in cells transfected with control plasmid, we see robust levels of SMIC6. However, in cells transfected with wild-type HBX, SMIC6 has been depleted from these cells, and you can see the quantification here. Cells transiently expressing the mutant form of HBX, which cannot engage the cellular ubiquitin ligase complex, we now detect again robust levels of SMIC6. So we have um, continued these results using an in vitro HBV infection system using primary human hepatocytes which is a physiologically re relevant in vitro system in which we can study the full HBV infectious cycle. For this system, hepatocytes are isolated from normal human donor liver tissue and plated to reform confluent monolayers. These cells are then infected with virus, and then 13 days post-infection, primary human hepatocytes, or PHH, are analyzed by immunofluorescence microscopy and Western. So here we asked whether or not SMIC6 can be degraded on a single cell level. We use confocal microscopy 
during HPV infection. And in the top row, we have uninfected primary human hepatocytes. We've labeled nuclei, and in each nucleus, you can see robust levels of SMIC6. We've also detected a viral marker, the capsid protein, or HB, HBV uh, core. And in the bottom panel, you see HBV infected hepatocytes. Four hepatocytes in this field of view have been infected. And we never achieve 100% infection efficiency throughout our monolayer culture. We usually get around 80, 85% uh, PHH infected. But here we have a nice internal control where neighboring uninfected hepatocytes are expressing robust levels of SMIC6. So we have shown that SMIC6 is degraded on a single cell level as well as a population level. And quantification of these uh, confocal data yield uh, a fax plot we have shown that in uninfected primary human hepatocytes, the vast majority, 98% of cells across the population, are positive for SMIC6 and negative for a viral marker. In infected hepatocytes, we, see, we still see about 12% of cells in the population which are SMIC6 positive and HBV core negative. And we detect about 80% of the cells within the culture positive for HBV core and SMIC6 has been depleted from these cells. And we're showing representative images here of these cell nuclei. To further analyze these data and take the system in vivo, we analyzed a humanized mouse liver model of infection. As you may know, human hepatitis virus, hep HBV, does not infect mouse hepatocytes. So to get around this barrier, we used humanized mice, which uh, shortly after birth, the mice suffer an acute liver injury in which the vast majority of murine hepatocytes are depleted. Uh, shortly after birth, these mice are reconstituted or xenografted with human hepatocytes derived from normal livers. 10 to 13 weeks post xenograft, mice are infected with wild type virus, and about 12 weeks later, we have we can show that about 90% of the hepatocytes have been infected. So we've taken these livers and analyzed them by Western blot and by fresh, uh, we've taken fresh frozen liver and analyzed them by microscopy, which I'll show in the next slide. So here we've looked at levels of SMIC6 and two viral markers, HBV core, as well as S antigen in these tissues. You can see that in three control non-infected mice, we detect SMIC6. And in six HBV-infected mice, SMIC6 has been depleted from this liver tissue, and we can detect viral antigens, core and S. We've also taken fresh frozen liver tissue and looked for levels of SMIC6 and S antigen, as well as stained for nuclei here. So in the top panel, we have a representative tissue from non a non-infected mouse. And you can see that SMIC6 is detected within nuclei of these hepatocytes. However, in the infected tissue, we now detect high levels of S antigen throughout the field of view, and SMIC6 has been depleted from nuclei. So we've been able to show that SMIC6 is degraded both in vivo and in vitro. We next asked, what is the effect on wild-type HPV infection when the ubiquitin ligase machinery is depleted? So we knocked down DDB1, the E3 ubiquitin ligase that is hijacked by HBX to degrade SMIC6. So under normal conditions, HBX, again, is able to bind into this complex and degrade SMIC6. And when we deplete DDB1, we now dis disable this uh, complex. So you can see that during wild-type infection, PHH treated with siRNA, control siRNA, we can detect by northern blot HBV RNAs. However, when we deplete the ligase, DDB1, SMIC56 complex is still present, and we do not detect viral RNAs. When we knock down SMIC6, uh, SMIC we, we see robust levels of viral RNAs. In Delta X infected PHH, treated with siRNA, a control siRNA, we do not detect viral RNAs, again showing that the X protein is required for viral transcription from CCC DNA. Again, when we knock down DDB1, the SMIC56 complex is still present, and viral transcription is repressed. 
However, when we knock down SMIC6, uh, SMIC we now detect rescue of transcription from CCC DNA. And we can also show down here by analyzing levels of E antigen secreted from cells, the E antigen production is rescued in the absence of SMIC6, even though X is not present. Looking at this also by using another method, confocal microscopy, focus here on representative nuclei in each case. So all of these cells were infected with the Delta X virus and either treated with control targeting RNAi or siRNA targeting SMIC6 or siRNA targeting DDB1. So in cells that were infected with the Delta X virus and treated with control siRNA, the vast majority of cells were SMIC6 positive and HPV core negative. When we deplete SMIC6 from these cells, now we see about 80% of the cells positive for HPV core and negative for SMIC6. The remaining cell population was likely uninfected, but they have also been depleted of SMIC6 because of the siRNA. When we knock down DDB1, again, the SMIC5-6 complex is still present, and the vast majority, almost 100% of the cells, are SMIC6 positive and HPV core negative. So can we rescue the phenotype we see when we knock down the ubiquitin ligase DDB1? So again, we are surveying E antigen released from the cells during infection in PHH. So HPV-infected PHH treated with control siRNA, we see robust levels of E antigen produced from these cells. When we knock down the SMIC6 complex, X is still present to degrade SMIC6, and we have depleted it with siRNA, and E antigen is produced. When we knock down DDB1 and subsequently treat with a, SI, with a control siRNA, we see a great reduction in the levels of E antigen produced. However, when we uh, rescue with the siRNA targeting SMIC6, we see uh, increased levels of E antigen production. So how might the SMIC5-6 complex repress transcription from CCC DNA? And we hypothesize that the SMIC5-6 complex might play a direct role by binding to CCC DNA during infection. So to do this experiment, P PHH were analyzed or infected with wild-type virus and analyzed 10 days post-infection by chip analysis. An anti-NSC4 antibody, which will pull down one of the subunits, a representative subunit from the SMIC5-6 complex, was analyzed. And um, three regions, so a region of the cellular genome, which is expected to be transcriptionally repressed, as well as a region of the cellular genome, which is ex expected to be transcriptionally active, were surveyed, as well as CCC DNA. And we see that during wild-type infection, NSC4, or the SMIC5-6 complex, was not found to bind either of these regions. However, in the absence of X, NSC4 was found to associate with HPV, CCC DNA, but not cellular genes. So we are currently investigating the mechanism of SMIC5-6 restriction. One model is that the SMIC5-6 complex, and we've just shown from chip analysis, we have evidence that the SMIC5-6 complex is directly binding CCC DNA in the absence of X. And it is known that SMIC5-6 complex can alter the topology of DNA. And possibly this would lead to transcriptional silence, silencing. So we've drawn a few schematics, and perhaps this molecule, CCC DNA, which is covalent closed circular and chromatinized, perhaps this version, which is free of the SMIC5-6 complex in the presence of X, represents active CCC DNA. But when X is not present or not functional, the SMIC5-6 complex might be binding, uh, recognizing particular, or affecting the topology of CCC DNA, which disfavors transcription. So in summary, we've shown that the key function of the HBX protein is to redirect the DDB1 E3 ubiquitin ligase in order to target a host restriction factor, the SMIC5-6 complex, for degradation. We've also shown that the SMIC5-6 complex appears to associate directly with CCC DNA, as well as other episomal DNA templates. And this suggests a direct mechanism of transcriptional inhibition. 
So the mechanism by which the SMIC5-6 complex is repressing transcription is still under investigation. It will be interesting to determine whether or not the SMIC5-6 complex plays a role in repressing transcription from other viral DNA templates. And finally, this new biological understanding of the X protein raises the possibility of developing novel therapeutic agents targeting chronic hepatitis B virus infection. And further, for further information, the study was recently published in March in Nature. So I would again like to thank the other authors on the HBX study, as well as members of HBV Cure, particularly uh, Simon, who runs the HBX team, as well as my colleague Rudy, Song Rong, Divya, and Dara for the Northern Blots, and other members of the members of the Gilead Senior Leadership Team, as well as everyone else in HBV Cure. I'd also like to thank Holly and Jen at UC Berkeley Molecular Imaging Center for all of their support and input regarding confocal microscopy and analysis. Thank you. That was a great talk. Um, I wonder with this, this SMIC 5.6 being degraded, does that potentially provide a link to the uh, pathogenesis of hepatocellular carcinoma? Is it supposed to be repressing other things in the cell? Yes, so excellent question, and that's something that is very interesting to us moving forward. Um, the X protein has long been implicated in hepatocellular carcinoma, but it, the mechanism by which it could do that has not quite been revealed, but this is one possible mechanism by which um, an oncogenic state could be reached. So. so what differentiates the CCC DNA versus a plasmid? Um, so, well, both are closed covalent circular DNA templates, and both are chromatinized. We still have a lot of, we are in the throes of learning more and more and more about CCC DNA. There have been a, t a number of technical barriers to studying CCC DNA, but we can now purify it. So studies are really just... Have you just tried to, to look at the expression of like GFP off a of plasmid and knock down the, the SMC? just to see if you get an increase in expression. Maybe there's so right. much plasmid it overcomes it. Yes, that has been done in our collaborator's lab, in Michelle Sturman's laboratory. So they look at episomal DNA templates, and they've shown that X can activate the transcription from episomal DNA, but not integrated DNA. So they've shown that using GFP and luciferase expression plasmids. And that's by the same mechanism, by degrading SMIC5-6. Maybe I ask one before they reach yes. the microphone. So the SMIC 5.6, what is known about it? Does it bind to any classical repressor, transcriptional repressor complexes? Or do you think that it's by itself a structural component to suppress the virus? Well, so not a whole lot is known about how exactly the SMIC 5.6 complex works, but it is thought that it directly alters the topology of DNA. And so in that physical modulation of DNA, it might somehow play a role in regulating transcription. Any mass but, spec data on the complex? Are there anything interesting in there? Or? So we had a limited number of hits from the mass spec data. So we identified the SMIC5-6 complex. And but other, in the SMIC5 mass spec from SMIC5-6 complexes, what, what is in the complex? Any enzy enzymes? Any? So, the, so SMIC5 and SMIC6 have ATPase activity. Okay. And the six subunits are thought to be, to comprise a complex, but SMIC5-6 is also known to interact with other complexes, such as uh, the SMIC1-3 complex, as well as TOBO enzymes, as part of its role in um, regulating the topology of chromosomes and chromosome segregation. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'll speak loudly. Uh, <laughs> is it? Huh? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So you're talking about degradation, but could it be simply a, a, a complex that is formed with another protein, and could we recover uh, SMIC6 uh, by removing the protein that would be complex to it, if it were? So are you, sa are so, you saying uh, we're talking about, So you're, you're talking that it's degradation, because we don't see by uh, Western blood the protein anymore, but mm -hmm. could it be that the protein is pulled down with another protein complex? So we see if we use an inhibitor targeting the cull scaffold, um, an inhibitor, we can, um, so we, 
we can preserve the stability of SMIC 5.6, heavily implicating a, a degradation mechanism. Okay. Is that your question? Yeah, so it is definitely degradation. A, a degradation. Yes. <laughs> OK. okay. So no more further questions? Oh, no, one more. Um, does, the, does the complex go to all DNA in the nucleus, or does the viral DNA specifically <laughs> So that's a really interesting question. So you asked, does the SMIC5-6 complex localize throughout cellular DNA as well, or is it actively recruited to the viral genome? Um, we have, so that's an area that we're currently working on now. Um, if you noticed, SMIC6 is detected in nuclear foci. So those nuclear foci appear to represent um, ND10 or PML bodies, and many viral genomes will co-localize with those. So we're still working on this story right now, but that's a possible mechanism of localization between the viral DNA and the SMIC5-6 complex. Well, thank you very much for this very interesting talk.